Yo, Spencer Sakurai here, cinematographer and director. And in today's video, I wanna talk about a new lens setup, a new kind of lens combo that I've been playing with and I thought that it might interest you as well. So often in my career, you know, as a filmmaker, cinematographer, mostly for commercial work, I'm trying to always stand out in my market or, you know, I'm trying to get the most unique looking images. And I've talked about this a lot on the channel before and shooting on something like a vintage lens or a lens that has a lot of character to it can often help you stand out and kind of, you know, make your images look a little bit more unique. Well, I've been recently kind of looking for some new lenses, you know, trying to find something with a little bit more unique character, but still a little bit affordable. Um, and that's when I came across these little Voigtlander lenses. So Voigtlander, you know, has been making a lot of lenses that were designed for Leica M mount and they're stills lenses. They're designed to go on your like Leica film cameras and you know, the Leica M mount system in order to get something a little bit less expensive than the Leica lenses, which we all know are like above four or $5,000 a piece. Um, and if, but if you want a little small compact lens to throw on your Leica camera and you want to spend somewhere in the range of five, to a thousand dollars on a lens but still get this really small body this little small form factor with a really nice manual focus ring they're made out of metal then Voigtlander it was the, the answer to that so a lot of my cameras in the past have always been EF mounts so I've always kind of ignored the Voigtlander system because they're M mount and you can't really adapt M to EF but with all these mirrorless cameras out now you can basically adapt any lens to a mirrorless body so I started researching these Voigtlanders more because I was like I wonder if those look cool I wonder you know they're, they're they say that they're classic vintage look and there's a lot of different variations and focal lengths that you can't normally get with other lens systems. So I got asked to do this project recently, shoot a project, and we were going to be shooting on the Sony Venice because it's what the client owned. And we needed something a little bit more of a vintage vibe that would fit on the Venice and give me a, you know, a more unique look because this was kind of a period piece thing that we were shooting. So I started digging even deeper on the Voigtlanders and I found out they actually make Voigtlanders in a Sony E-mount, which I don't know if everyone knows this, but it's Sony Venice actually has a PL mount on it. But beneath the PL, hidden underneath that PL mount is a little Sony E-mount. So after looking at some photo samples online of the Voigtlander 35 millimeter classic F1.4, which was the one that seemed the most intriguing to me at the time, the classic one, a little bit more vintage, a little bit more, honestly, crappier characteristics, you know? Uh, the bokeh is really strange, but the body still had this nice focus ring on it and stuff. Well, a lot of the M-mount lenses are really tiny. They're like almost too small, almost too small to adapt. But then I found out that, that Voigtlander actually makes an E-mount version of the lens. So I just immediately bought it for the shoot. It was only like 550 bucks used on B&H. I was like, let's see how this thing looks. Got it in, looked at it, and I was like, wow, the bokeh on this looks so interesting, so intriguing. I really like the 35 millimeter wide open look on a full frame sensor for commercial work. It just gives you a really nice vibe. And we were actually gonna crop most of this for a widescreen 240 aspect ratio. So it just made sense to go a little bit wider. A 35 millimeter can be too wide sometimes for certain things, but I thought this might be a fun, unique look. So I purchased it. So like I said, this one has a Sony email on it, but I also purchased a couple days later, cause I was like, I wanna try this on my Komodo, the M-mount version. Now the M-mount version of this exact lens, actually there's a Mark one and a Mark II version. This one has the Mark one coating on it, but there's also a Mark II coating, which is just a little bit more refined. It's a single coating, which gives it more character versus the multi-coating, which is going to help with flaring and give it better color. But I wanted it to look more unique. So I wanted the single coating. Um, but the M-mount version was so tiny. It's designed to be a very nice balanced lens on a light like an M camera for shooting stills. So converting that to cinema use was just basically a, it was out of the question. I sent it back immediately, but I did hold on to the Sony in case I wanted to do some more work with it with a Sony camera, even though I own a Red Komodo, which is an RF camera. The Sony one has this really nice focus throw on it. Super nice. And the, the it's super like, it, it feels like a cinema lens. I mean, it has hard stops, has a really nice focus throw. It's made out of metal. Um, so putting something like an old gear, gear on it like this was super easy. I threw that on there and I threw this on the Sony Venice. Now it did look funny on the Sony Venice because the Sony Venice is a uh, very large camera and this is a very small lens, but we were able to make it work. I was able to basically shoot that entire project on this little 35 millimeter, $550 lens. And I feel like the footage turned out really well. So in order to test this out even more, I borrowed a uh, Sony FX3 from a friend. And this is a really fun combo. I think a lot of you will like this, people that don't 
necessarily have access to a Sony Venice all the time because we, we know we don't all get that um, luxury all the time. But this little Sony FX3, or you could use an FX30 or an A7 IV or whatever, you know, just a Sony camera. This little setup is really fun. It's super compact, but you get this nice kind of vintage look. You get a really nice, you know, manual focus throw on it. Um, it opens up to f 1.4 and then it has hard stops which i don't normally like but for this it's kind of nice like these little it's got little clicks in between so it's not like you're stuck at 1.4 and then stuck at two like a lot of manual lenses this one actually lets you step up in like third stop increments which is really 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 fun and i really like this small package since it was designed for a stills camera you know an old film camera this little package is like really fun just to bop around with here I am again saying bop around with. But if you want that kind of vintage look, but you want it inexpensive on a little Sony camera, this might be a nice little lens to consider. Now I say just this lens, 35 millimeter f1.4, but I also am going to order a few more of these lenses to try out so that they actually make a 40 millimeter f1.2. 40 millimeter to me is one of the most like, it's probably one of the best focal lengths you can have for full frame when shooting video, in my opinion. I really like the, you just get a little bit extra compression over 35, not quite as wide, but you're not as tight as a 50, 55, something like that. Um, so I really like the 40 millimeter look. So it's, and not a lot of people make 40 millimeters. I mean, I think Sigma is basically the only other company that you can probably get quickly uh, a lens that's in 40 millimeters. And that lens is quite expensive. I think the Sony 40 millimeter Voigtlander um, is about $1,000, $900 or something like that. Now what's kind of cool about that one is it's a 1.2, I believe, and it's an APO lens. And basically an APO lens is going to have less chromatic aberration, less defects than a lot of other lenses, but I'm hoping that it'll still have that kind of classic Voigtlander look and give me some really nice bokeh. So that should be here soon. Also they make like a 28 millimeter, but the appeal here is that they have this vintage look. They're actually old vintage lenses, I believe, but they're in this kind of modern-esque body made for manual focusing, so they're really easy to adapt to cinema. I would actually really love to see if they make these lenses, like someone's rehousing these lenses for cinema, or if Voigtlander came out with a cinema version of these lenses, that would be super cool. Let's take a break to talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present your work online. If you're anything like me, you're a cinematographer, you're a filmmaker, you're going to need a place, a website, to show off what you're capable of. And Squarespace makes it super easy to do that. You can start by using one of their award-winning templates to get going, or you can build the entire site from scratch, and Squarespace gives you all the back-end tools to do that. It goes without saying, you can embed videos from any of the platforms of your choosing right into the website and set them up however you desire. Something that's really helped me in my career is the contact form functionality because people can actually reach out to me directly through my website and then I'm able to filter that through my email and know that someone's actually inquiring about a job through my website, you know, direct contact like that rather than it seeming like it might be spam on my regular email. So if you're looking to show off your work online, well, you can just do that with Squarespace. Click the link in the description to get 10% off and I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now these lenses are fairly sharp. They're designed for Leica cameras, right? They're kind of supposed to have this like very kind of realistic texture to them. And the fall off is very different than a lot of other vintage lenses, which the fall off kind of is like softer fall. This is kind of a harder fall off, but in a good way, in my opinion, I think it's a unique look. I don't think a lot of other lenses have the same look. So anyways, I feel like these are kind of like little hidden gems. I'm sure people have been using Voigtlanders for a long time now, but I haven't seen a lot of people using them for video or in the cinema world. And I think they're a little bit of a sleeper lens. So yeah, so the only problem here is that the Sony mount bodies tend to ha be a little bit easier to converting to cinema, putting a gear on them. They have a, just a bigger body, a bigger focus ring. Whereas the M mount versions, which you could adapt to more cameras and it would be more flexible in that way. Um, like I really want to try to use some on my uh, my Red Komodo. The adapter for that's like a Metabones adapter is like $90. And then the focus rings are meant to have this little thumb tab on them for pulling your own focus. And so it's kind of a hard to adapt and put a gear on. So it might be out of luck when using it on my Komodo, but for all you mirrorless, Users out there, I know a lot of you people shoot Sony. These are definitely some lenses to consider. They also flare really interestingly. I think I prefer a flare that's a little bit more of like an eyelash flare, you know, a little bit more like it kind of washes over the lens and looks very organic, whereas these do not look like that. They're like these very sharp red circles, which I do think are unique and they're kind of fun. I don't really like flares anyways. I don't tend to shoot a lot into lights and create flares on my images. That's just not my style. So for me, this is not really a big deal. Um, maybe if you're looking for like a kind of sci-fi digital look, 
these might be fun to use for something like that if you're going to flare the lens. So very unique, so that's something to note that these have a very unique flare to them. Once again, we are looking for unique, so maybe that's something that you might like. So I'm also gonna, th I think I'm also gonna try to use this lens for some stills. Um, I have a Sony a7 IV that should be here soon that I'm gonna play with again um, because I'm really just thinking about buying that camera and it might be fun to have this little Sony lens on there to get some stills with and video with if I ever need it for that. Well, this is my short little review over these Voigtlander lenses. I hope that was helpful for you. Maybe these are some lenses that you might want to consider in the future. And until next time, guys, I'm Sister Sakurai. See ya.